This is a short tutorial which explains how to work problems that ask you to compare the rate of a reaction with respect to different reactants and products. And depending on the stoichiometry of the balanced reaction equation, um, you express those rates a little bit different for each reactant and each product. All right, so in this first problem, it has two parts. In the first part, it's asking you to write an expression relating the rate of reaction with respect to both the reactant and product. And before we do that, I want you to take a look at, just intuitively, at the rate with respect to ozone and oxygen. You can see that for every two molecules of ozone that disappear or decompose, we form more oxygen. We form three oxygen. And what that tells us is that you're going to see oxygen appear much more, not much more, but somewhat more quickly than you're going to see ozone disappear. And so the rate expression needs to reflect that. So quantitatively, the first thing that you need to realize is that rate expression in general is always the change in concentration, typically the units of molarity, of either a reactant or a product over a period of time. Okay. All right, so in terms of ozone, that expression would be, and I don't, if you went to my lecture on Thursday, um, you will hopefully remember that in order to do this, you look at the coefficients in the balanced reaction and put one over whatever the coefficient is. And so since ozone has a two in front of it in the balanced reaction, I'm going to put one over two times the change in concentration of ozone over the change in time. And then if I want to show this same rate expression in terms of oxygen, I would do a similar type thing. The coefficient in front of oxygen, however, is 3. So it becomes 1 over 3 times change in concentration of oxygen per unit time. Okay. Now one more important thing that you need to realize is when you're comparing the rate of reaction with respect to reactants and product, that one of them, the reactants, is disappearing. So the reactant, the rate with respect to the reactant is decreasing and that is shown by using a negative sign in front of the rate expression. The products, in this case oxygen, the rate is increasing over time and so that is shown with the use of a positive front sign in front of the expression. All right, so moving on to part B, where it gives you an actual value for the rate with respect to oxygen. Okay, and rate is always going to be in concentration per time. And it's saying, okay, now that you have this value for oxygen, what would the value for ozone be? Well, in order to do that, you've got to have the expression that we just wrote for part A. So let's go ahead and rewrite that expression, but let's fill in what we know for oxygen. All right, so the rate expression, again, is minus one-half change in concentration of ozone over time and equals one-third. Now, the actual rate expression for oxygen is the part that I've just circled here. And so now we know that is 6 times 10 to the minus 5th <coughs> molarity per second. Okay. And so now solving this to find out what the rate with respect to ozone is, is simply a matter of algebra. You've got to get this one half sign um, away so that all you have on the left hand side of the expression is the rate with respect to ozone. So how do I get rid of that one half? You multiply both sides by two. It's just simple algebra again. Okay. So what do we end up with? We end up with then that the rate with respect to ozone, which is what the question is asking, equals two-thirds, because remember you've multiplied both sides by two, times six times ten to the minus fifth. 
Now, of course, you still have your minus sign in here. It could be on either side. It's just, again, showing that the rates are opposite of each other. One's going up, one's going down. So what do we get for an answer, a final answer? All right, so the final answer for this, when you punch all that in, is 4 times 10 to the minus 5th. So does that make sense? Let's look at the balanced reaction equation again. We know by looking at that that the rate expression with respect to oxygen should be more than the rate expressed in terms of ozone because there's a 3 in front of oxygen and only a 2 in front of ozone. Is that what we found? Well, we found that the rate with respect to oxygen is 6 times 10 to the minus 5th and the rate with respect to ozone is 4 times 10 to the 5th minus 5th. Okay? So we did in fact find that the rate with respect to ozone is less as it should be. So all is right with the world and hopefully you've understood that. I have one more problem after this that I strongly encourage you, I'm going to prompt you and help you to try to work by yourself though, okay? So here we go. And here it is. So here's the reaction equation. It's a decomposition reaction of dinitrogen pentoxide. And when it decomposes, it forms nitrogen dioxide and oxygen gas. And the question is that if they give you the rate of reaction with respect to dinitrogen pentoxide, what is the value for the rate in terms of the two products? All right. So I want you to go ahead, pull out a piece of paper and a pen, turn this recording off, and see if you can do that yourself. And then I'll go over the answer with you on the next page. Before I work out the specifics of that problem, make sure that you can understand this type of graphical representation of the rate of a reaction. And so, how do we know this is a graph depicting the rate of a reaction? Because it has plotted concentration versus time. So, concentration versus time, the slope gives you the rate. And so, what can you get out of a graph like this? Um, you may want to put me on pause and see what you can get out, but these are the key factors. You can get that the rate of NO2 and the rate of oxygen are both increasing in this graph. It's a positive slope. And that the rate of dinitrogen pentoxide is decreasing. There's a negative slope. What else can you tell? Well, if you compare the rate of um, nitrogen dioxide um, appearing versus the rate of oxygen appearing. Which one has a faster rate? NO2 appears faster than O2. All right. So those are that's information you can get from the balanced equation also. But this is just the graphical representation, which you also need to know how to interpret. Okay. So if you tried working them out yourself and you would like to check your answers, they are right at the bottom of the page. And if you got them wrong or you just want to see how I would work them out, um, then I'm going to show you right now. So the first thing you want to do always is to write the rate expression that relates all of the reactants and products to each other. So that would be, if you hear heavy breathing in the background, it is my dog, not me. Okay, he's trying to play fetch. Okay, so here we go. Um, again, take the coefficients in the balanced reaction, and it's assumed to be a 1 here if there's no coefficient, and that coefficient gets inverted 1 over the coefficient for the rate expression. So we have 1 half times the change in concentration of N2O5 over time equals... And that is decreasing. That's the only reactant. So there's a negative sign. It's decreasing in value. And equals one-fourth times change in concentration of NO2 
per unit time. And then of course there's a coefficient of 1 in front of the oxygen, so I'll just show it to show it. Change in concentration of oxygen per unit time. All right, there we go. So now, what information did they give us? They gave us the information for the disappearance of dinitrogen pentoxide. So I'm going to plug that in. And I'm just going to do one at a time. So the rate with respect to dinitrogen pentoxide is 4.2 times 10 to the minus 7. Make sure or be careful not to drop the coefficient when you're filling in the actual rate value. These coefficients or the inverse of the coefficients are the factor that make all of these different expressions equal to each other. So you gotta you gotta put them in there if, if you're gonna be using these equal signs. Alright, and so let's do nitrogen dioxide first. That equals one fourth times the rate with respect to nitrogen dioxide. And now I want to solve and find out what the rate with respect to nitrogen dioxide is. So it's again just simple algebra. Um, so I need to get rid of this factor one-fourth. I'm going to multiply both sides by a factor of four to get rid of that. And what I end up with then is the rate with respect to nitrogen dioxide is 4 halves times the rate they gave us with respect to nitrogen pentoxide. Okay, so what is that? That is basically 2 times this value. So 8.4 times 10 to the minus 7 units again are concentration per unit time, molarity per second, and there's how you do the first one. Now if you still, if you didn't do the first one on your own, turn me off and try to do the second one please. Now for just a brief moment you may be asking yourself and probably should be asking yourself what the heck happened to the minus sign? Um, I mentioned the minus sign because you do need to be aware that you put a minus sign when you're talking about reactants that are decreasing in concentration and a positive sign when talking about products that are increasing. However, if you read the question carefully, <clears throat> it says what is the rate of appearance of each of these products and it gives you the rate of decomposition. So it's asking you really for an absolute value of the rate with respect to nitrogen dioxide and oxygen. So, and that'll be the case most of the time. They just want the absolute value of the rate. How fast is it changing? Um, so in most cases when you're doing a quantitative answer you are not going to need plus and minus. The most time when you're going to need plus and minus is when it asks you to write the generic expression comparing them. That's just to show any graders that you know there's a difference in the direction. Here's the rate expression comparing the rate with respect to N205 to the rate with respect to oxygen. And this one's pretty straightforward. Um, there is no coefficient to simplify in front of oxygen. And so we can just say the rate with respect to the product oxygen, so minus there, equals 4.2 times 10 to the minus 7 divided by 2, or, whoops, 2.1 times 10 to the minus 7 molarity per second. 